Hi, it's Cheryl Mann, your juicing gardener on YouTube. And I didn't have a lot of good light in my sunroom today, so I thought I'd bring you outside and prove to you how freezing it is here. I'm in Northern Ohio, Zone 5B, 6A. Uh, anyway, it's about 10 below today, maybe 5 below, and it's been down to 20 below. So it's really cold. So we're going to talk about my winter sewing setup and my workstation because I'm getting ready for my big winter sewing planting. I actually snuck and did about 20 containers last night, but today's my big day. It's mid-February 2015. I'm going to be putting in... I don't know, I'm shooting for 100, 120 containers of all different kinds of vegetables and fruits. I'm not a flower gardener, but you can also use this technique for flowers, herbs, trees, and shrubs as well. So, what else did I want to tell you? I'm going to take you inside and show you my setup. Now, it's going to look kind of messy because it's kind of a messy project, but I wanted you just to see what it's like to have a workstation where you're doing them all at once. Now, I, I know what I wanted to tell you. Um, there are a lot of different ways to do winter sewing, and there's no perfect way. There's only your perfect way. So what I'm going to show you is just how I do it. It's my way, and it changes all the time as I learn new things and make mistakes and have successes. So just dive in. Don't worry about, you know, doing it perfectly because there is no perfect. Just get some seeds in soil, put the little containers, plop them out in the snow, wait till spring, and you're going to be amazed at the plants that come up. And then you'll have free seedlings, almost free seedlings, that you don't have to go out and spend four or five bucks for each, and you don't have to grow them in your house with this grow lights and take over your house. You just plop them out in the snow and let them sit there and Mother Nature does her thing. So it's a very exciting technique. Hope you give it a try and hang tight. We're going to go inside. It's so cold the phone won't turn off. I swear it's still recording. Maybe my fingers are so cold it won't turn it off. I'm going to have to take you inside and then hopefully learn how to edit this later. Oh, I've never seen this. Okay, I have so many things to show you. I'm so excited, but let me give you first a bird's eye view of my workstation here. Look at that mess, but it's really an organized mess. Okay. Oh, and look how cold. You've seen the snow already. How beautiful. So it's a great sunroom. It's a little cold. I have to have a space heater out here, but I'm going to try not to be shaky for you, but I'm going to be moving around a bit, so I'll do my best. First, I have these two big bags filled with the containers from last year. A lot of people don't reuse their containers. Oh, that's one inside of another, okay? But I do. And I timed myself how much, how long it took to clean them. It was only 45 seconds per container. And that is infinitely less time than it takes to create the new containers because you have to drill holes or use a soldering iron or and use scissors to cut them around. And this is it just for me, it's quicker. And I, I just felt, I had so much fun last night. I snuck and did a couple before my big day today. Did about 20, maybe 15 containers. And it was so wonderful to have them all done. Okay, so those are my two big bags. Those are like contractor bags full of containers. I've already used a, a lot on that bag. Then I bring my containers over here and I just sit them ready to go. And then I put the soil in. Okay, now uh, you've seen my other video on me buying this soil. I got the black gold. Usually I use Fox Farm Happy F Frog, but they had a major labeling issue and I thought they weren't organic anymore. And you can watch that video and find out the outcome of that. But you know, I'm not a stickler for much, but I am a stickler for using organic it's safe. All the other soil is not safe for you. And we'll talk about that more in other videos. Um, but if you can afford it, try and try and get your best price you can on organic soil. So I have my soil here. If you're not using organic, like one of these potting soil mixes, like Black Gold or Fat Fox Farm, get some vermiculite. I have a bag down here in case I needed some. Vermiculite, kind of a medium grade. Um... It's kind of like perlite, but perlite's a lot lighter, and I don't like it as well. This one has more perlite. The other one doesn't. So anyway, you want to mix that in. It's good for drainage. You don't just want to use plain soil or topsoil. It'll be like clay, and you, this won't work, or it won't work as well. Okay, so I take the black soil or the potting soil, and I put it in this container, and I filled this up last night. Boy, I can't stop my hand shaking there. There we go. I mean, my hand's not shaking, but the camera is. And I put two full gallons of water. See that right there? I filled that twice, so I'm, I want you to have really wet soil, not drippy, not soaking, you know, soup, but it's way, it's more than moist, because these are going out for the winter. It's kind of like a bear hibernating, you know, give them all the food and water you can, because that's it, the go babies. All they're going to get after this is, they're going to get watered, obviously, with rain and snow, but you want good wet soil. So then I filled the bucket up, filled it with water, and then I put my containers over here. I filled up three, four, five of them with soil. Those are done already right there. And then this is my workstation. So I just use the top lid 
and a little plate to put each one in because the water runs out of the bottom. So I keep reusing the same water over and over. Like once I finish one, I'll take that good, you know, nutri nutrient dense um, soil water and I'll pour it into the next one and just keep rotating like that. And then I have a water bottle here because it doesn't have enough water from down there. I want to water it again. Make sure you have a little trash bag because you're going to have lots of bits to throw out. And then once I plant the seeds, I squirt the top of the soil really well with a squirt bottle. So I got that. And then over here, I've got two products I'm testing for you. Let me get over here. This one right here uh, for cutting the plastic containers because scissors about destroyed my hands. I, I used just these regular scissors last year. And I, as you know, I put in 69 containers. So I about couldn't use my hand for two days, you know, cutting them like that. I thought about all different kinds of things like, you know, a turkey carver or, you know, tin snips from the plumbing department and then I found these so if they're good I'll do a review on them for you I haven't tried them yet these are some gloves my dear friend Lily just sent me from Florida so the, the, the woman in the store said these are the best gloves for women on the planet for gardening so I'm trying those out and I'll give you a review on that thank you Lily um, I've got duct tape just regular standard duct tape and I've got oh I used to the first time I tried um, clothes pins and they were okay but they faded in the sun and some of them would blow, blow off or get knocked off for labeling. And then I use these basic labels like this that you can get in any plant store. Little ones. And I use these. I really like these. I just ordered these on Amazon. I'll have links below for all of this stuff if you want, just to save yourself time with my uh, Juicing Gardener Amazon store. These are really light. Let me see if I can get one out here. I thought they were going to be really thick plastic. And they're super, like, flimsy. And they're just great. And what I'm doing is I use these inside the bucket because my labeling on the outside might fade. A lot of stuff faded last year, and we'll talk about labeling in a second. But definitely want to – actually, I'll talk about it now. You definitely want to label outside and label inside in case outside gets washed off, sun faded, or somehow lost. And then hopefully the one inside will still work. You can also tape on the bottom. And mind you, I'm going to digress for a second. I learned this wonderful technique from Trudy Davidoff, who has wintersown.org. And that's where she explains a lot of this, um, the whole technique and how you do it. And that's where I learned how to do it. Thank you, Trudy. Um, so she, can, she talks about having a backup label on the bottom with duct tape as well as the one on top. But I really am into doing them on top because then I don't have to turn them and look and they're all going to be muddy and then they could block up your holes. Um, but it's still a really good backup to put duct tape on the bottom, that duct tape right there, and then label it because you can use a Sharpie if you do it on the bottom. The sun won't fade it, but the Sharpies up here will fade it. And I'll show you in a second what I'm using this time. So you got your duct tape, you're going to close it back up after you put your seeds in, you spray it with water, label it out here, you got your label inside, and these puppies are good to go. Right there, that's what I did last night. I think I did butternut squash, three different types of red peppers, sweet peppers, and started the kale. Let me see, oh, and those over there, that is about five or six bags of unprepared milk containers and you know jugs and water jugs and things people have saved me because I don't use plastic very much in my life at all so all my friends and my sister has been saving them for me thank you Amy people have been really helpful um, so I have not prepared those yet I'm kind of not dreading it but it's just more time consuming um, I'm going to use up all the ones that I've done and been pre-prepared from last year and then I'll hit this these bags over here until I'm done and I'll probably use them all um, and maybe even beg borrow and steal for some more so have we covered? Oh, and then my seeds, of course. You have to have your seeds out. And I just keep mine in this plastic container here and cover it with a towel so the sunlight doesn't fade them. So I have all my seeds ready. Oh, and the pens. That was the last part. We're almost done. Um, I, like I said, I used Sharpie and that did not work. It faded. So I got these paint pens. Someone on the Facebook group uh, mentioned the paint, paint pens. And they're kind of messy. I got really super wide and medium wide. And then there's a fine well, I wish I'd have gotten the fine and this and not this. Look what the mess that one made. First one I tried last night. <laughs> That's supposed to say butter, bee nut, butternut <laughs> for squash. And the paint just ran and ran. Now it's a really, you know, solid now. It's all dry and it's not smeary or anything. But you got to be careful. The paint runs all over. So we'll see if the butternut, if the butternut works, if the, that um, paint pen works this time. So I used all paint pen because, like I said, I really like to just stand there and look and I don't want to have to touch them and turn them over to see what's working, what's not. Because I'll be going out in about um, 
I'll be doing this for the next few days till I've got uh, almost all of them out. But then in another month, I'm in mid-February now, probably in two weeks I'll put more out, and then two more weeks I'll put more out till the middle of March. Um, and then, you know, experiment. I'll do testing. I'll put some of the same seeds out now and put them out later and see which ones do better. So I think that's everything. I hope you enjoy this and make sure you share this with your gardener friends because so many people want to know how to grow food. They want to save the money and have control of their health and, and know what their food you know, has got in it and be able to control and make good organic food. They don't know how inexpensive it is, how simple it is, how easy it is. Share this and let people know this is how you grow food. You plop some seeds in dirt, close up the containers, throw them outside, and in spring you have a bonanza. You have an absolute joy watching all these plants explode. Then you can transplant the seeds seedlings into your containers, which, you know, I'm all container gardener uh, with trays and buckets, and you can also plant them right in the ground. So that's it for today. I appreciate your comments. As always, go down in the comment section. Let me know what my setup uh, looks like to you. And if you think of anything I missed to make things easier, please tell me, tell everybody down there. And uh, as always, if you like the video, I always appreciate your thumbs up, your comments, and I appreciate you sharing this journey with me. I have a lot of fun with it, and I hope you do too. Take care. Bye-bye.